Oh, please, <laughs> say more. Or a hobnob. A hobnob is not a serious biscuit. I didn't say it was a serious biscuit. I said it was you. <laughs> I'm not being mean. Maybe I am a bit. I have stuck my butt in one. <laughs> <laughs> this is a funeral, ma'am. You're through to 1-800-DRAMA. The show where you share your biggest dilemmas. And we help you navigate them. I'm Sharba. And I'm Jamie. Come join us as we help people figure out if they are the drama. Because sometimes you just need an outside perspective. And we can all expand our own mindsets along the way. Wait, am I the drama? Red flag, green flag, Sharba. Hit me. Somebody not being on social media at all. Ooh. Well, this is I have the same reaction. <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell. I'm feeling like I want to red flag it, but then I'm like, you know what? Good for you. I feel very similar. I'm like, for people who live in a culture where there's the means, like technology and phones and availability and internet and everything, I'm like, how can you not be on social media at all? I find it bizarre, but at the same time, I'm like, no, do you know what? You do you. And that's maybe positive for your life. Now that I've thought about it a bit more, I've let it brew. I do totally agree with you, which is funny you're agreeing with me so I'm just essentially you're saying agreeing with myself. yourself I do agree with the points that we are making but to not be on at all mm. is a lot like how do you get news I, I get it well you I guess you could still the have a news app you can have news apps but it's not even LinkedIn so like not even a professional yeah. social media presence no I, I know the news can be delivered through news sites I'm just saying I feel like I learn so much impartially by going to sources because I find that a lot of news platforms mm. are so invested I've just lost mm. all faith in any platform being impartial sure it's up to us to curate and understand understand and create our spaces understand. online yes mm. by going directly to sources of the information that we wish to understand you want to understand about trans people listen to trans person you want to understand what's going on in terms of current horrible wars go and listen to the people speaking about those wars from the people who've actually experienced it right mm. so for that reason i do think it's a red flag to not have it at all but it's a super big turn on right if you have it but don't use it a lot yeah <laughs> if you're like yes i do but i care about my time so i'm gonna put my phone away what do you mean looking at the phone in the morning scrolling before you yeah. brush your teeth <laughs> not for me i'd yeah. be like oh please <laughs> say more oh my god <laughs> i do think it's a red flag if you only have facebook yeah i don't know why just personally for me only facebook or twitter if you oh, I, yeah, yeah yeah if you only, only the got facebook's and the twitter yeah. yeah yeah and that's all you've got if you do have it alongside others not a red flag and if nothing you against only... Meta because like if you only have an instagram okay it's the demographic is it it's, it's the, the demographic. it's the millennial gen z versus like the boomer type <laughs> social media users okay fascinating so shabba mm. what's going on well, it's July, it's Pride. We're well into the thick of a Pride summer. The thick of it. Into the thick of it. The, into the thick the of big it. Thick. Oh, bush. <laughs> You enjoy that pride bush, my loves. I hope you're having fun, whatever you're up to. I Absolutely. hope you're celebrating and being able to feel your gorgeous self. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of trans pride events specifically coming up. Trans pride Brighton. Yes. Trans pride London. Yes, absolutely. Very exciting. And main prides too. I just love this time in summer. Yeah, I love It's not just June. They're yeah. all around. I honestly don't understand where this thing came from, where June was the only pride month. I think it's the best weather month. It's pride <laughs> season. It is. There's always, I mean, it's pride year. And it's always real. pride season. <laughs> but pride season season is definitely like, I, I don't know I feel like we have a lot more pride activities and events towards the end of summer yeah like July August but sure if you want to mm. say that June is pride month and then we're just gonna say every month is pride month that's fine yeah <laughs> <laughs> we also have Jamie's beautiful the teen LGBT coming out in paperback <gasps> paperback the, the soft August. version the yes. soft version it's out on the 5th of August so if you're a little soft peach a little soft spud a mashed potato if you will maybe you want to <laughs> consider <laughs> taking a look at that but no I'm, I'm really glad we were able to get that out it's been a journey but mm. a lot of the feedback we've from you gorgeous listeners is that paperback is um, more accessible exactly. and it was important to make the book as accessible as possible so sure. yay Ooh, hopefully we'll be doing some more signings soon watch the space me and my terrible signature but for now are you ready <gasps> to go fishing for <gasps> a drama let's go oh drama Am I the drama for telling my daughter-in-law I nearly read Dill? Her feelings <laughs> are not my problem, and for F's sake, you don't need to be invited to everything. Ooh, this kind oh. of feels like something we just did. The mother-in-law. This <gasps> is the mother-in-law saying From the it. other situation. Ooh. She just didn't want to say it. No, I'm kidding. I don't think it's the same <laughs> no, story. No, I don't think it is either. <laughs> OP says, I will keep this as short as possible. The family have a code word. The family sounds so... The family? Robert De Niro movie-esque, doesn't it? The family. Oh, it's this Doctor Who thing, 
isn't it? It is. The They're family. a little family of aliens that wanted to murder people. One's a scarecrow now. Mm? Mm. Anyway, the family has a code word that means to meet up at my home because there's bad news. Oh, oh. how often does this family have bad news? <laughs> that feels really sad. So an emergency family meeting. This is something that's extremely rare oh. and it means to drop what you're doing and get over as soon as possible. Oh, okay. I see. So it's probably not something that's come out of like necessity of happening frequently, but they've just gone. If this were to happen, I think this is a good way to go about it. I wonder if it happened once and they were and like, then, yeah, th- we need something. You okay. Know. Yeah. Okay. Fascinating. Sure. Mm. It's only an invite for the kids. No in-laws are invited. Ooh. Ooh. Even if you're married. Well, that's what an in-law would be. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're so right. I was just thinking partners, but I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. I feel like we always go to each other's families, whether it's for good reasons, neutral reasons, or bad reasons. I feel like in the emergencies that my family's had, you have been a bigger help than I have. <laughs> Well, often if it's like your family that you grew up with and not the family you've married into, you're more emotionally invested often. So mm-hmm. it can be nice to have that outside perspective on somebody who's yeah. caring, but that little bit removed. I that's always if that's how I feel. that's what the family have a problem with, though. Like that sense of it being more removed. The I know we're going to read family. on. But it does feel really interesting. Like I, I mm. really don't know how to feel about that. I don't think I like it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Lassie, this was discussed and agreed upon by everyone. And by everyone, do we mean the in laws have also agreed it or within the main family? Because in what if in-laws mm. then come into the family after this rule has been made? Yeah. This was due to everybody being most comfortable with sharing bad news with their siblings and not having to be polite with in-laws. Interesting. But then surely you could just call and speak to those individual siblings or there could be certain scenarios where it's like, hey, Bob doesn't really feel like sharing this information with his like in-law siblings because maybe it's something quite private. Yeah, it just feels weird to do it like as a blanket rule. For every single yeah. scenario. I hear you. Unless there are scenarios is where if those people were allowed to come, the in-laws, the extras of the family, then this emergency meeting wouldn't be called. But then what I'm thinking is, what is it? Oh, what is it that would be Exactly. Shared? Do you know, my brain is just going, I think they've way overthought this. Yeah. They are over planning <laughs> because like when poop hits the fan, yeah. you just like call up whoever you need to speak to. We don't need a code word. We don't need this pre-plan of who exactly can show up. It might even be that for certain situations and things that's happened to Bob, the brother, he only wants to tell one of his siblings. He doesn't want to tell the other three. Maybe. You know? At what point does this feel like it's manifesting bad things to happen? Because yeah. you're like so well set up. Now they're like, here's a red button, never press it. And you kind of will the one yeah. for the red button. This does feel a bit intense. Yeah. For example, my daughter used the code word and it was an emergency family meeting. She was getting a divorce oh. and needed help. Oh no. Afterwards, everyone fills in their spouses, but not all the gritty details. Um. Okay. I have two questions. Okay. Number one, what is your code word? Yeah. Because it has to be appropriate for this scenario. We've had code words in our time. Yogurt. But that's what I mean. They're stupid. If it's going to be like as serious yeah. as this, they must have like a serious code word. Chocolate digestive. Chocolate digestives are a serious biscuit. They're, they're seriously good. They are like the most they're unserious re- biscuit. They're so good. If you want a serious biscuit, we're talking like malted milk. I'll go away. Scottish shortbread. That would be the serious biscuit code word. You're a hobnob. A hobnob is not a serious biscuit. I didn't say it was a serious biscuit. I said it was you. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't know where your head is at. <laughs> are trying to be a drama hotline okay, right now. Serious code word, umbrella. I was thinking more like if you were called the Bartholomews, it would be like Bartholomew time. <laughs> <laughs> That is so stupid. That's worse than chocolate digestive. I can't even think of one. Armchair. No, I don't think it could be a random word. It would need to be... Oh, like serious. You know, like MI5. What's a a serious topic? 007. Arrested. That would work. 007. Yeah, or just... Hello, (laughs) something bad's happened. Can we all meet up? really need us to meet up ASAP, please. I I totally agree with with you. Okay, secondly, Mm -hmm. you go to this family meeting, right? Imagine Mm. this has happened. Mm. Your sister's getting a divorce. Mm. You come back. You mm. are telling me every detail under the sun. Not because I expect yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not it's leaving the gritty details. I know. I mean, maybe not all couples work like maybe, that. Maybe. Maybe we're looking at this from a very blinkered lens of how we operate as a couple, which makes sense. Yeah, because if you've just been told serious news, for me, the way I process serious things is to speak them out. And I speak them over and over and over again. And I talk them through with the closest people in my life. And that would be you. I would come home and be like, oh my god, not in a gossipy way, but just, okay, I need I help need to process processing this, this exactly. and this is how I do it. Yeah, and what are your thoughts on X, Y, Z? And yeah. did you know this happened and this was a conversation? Like, am I being too harsh about this? I mean, am I being too kind? Do you know what I mean? To be like, fair, I do think at this point we share a brain, <laughs> but... I would agree. 
So I'm struggling to see why this would work this way. I'm not saying everybody always has to be invited to everything, but I'm it's trying just... to think if there are examples where maybe it would be untoward. I can think of examples where people might not want a very vulnerable incident or experience yeah. to be shared. Like if somebody was assaulted in a particular mm. way. Or if they had done something wrong and they didn't want to be judged and so they just wanted to tell like they're really, really in a network. That might be a thing. The question, I understand the situation here is a divorce, but if the person going through the time who's called the meeting, mm -hmm. would they be allowed to bring their spouse? Because if in-laws aren't allowed, that's technically an in-law to I the rest of the family. I doing something so like they... this without the support. But of... imagine if it were you, yeah. that with your family that called something serious, you would never want to go to that without me. Yeah. So I'm just like, does that mean that if it wasn't a divorce and it was something else, the husband would have been going? My point um, is, even if you're saying that it's like, details are being spared, details are not being spared. The, 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 and certainly not by everybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's not going to happen. <laughs> unless there's something that you have like very specifically said, look, this is really vulnerable and I can't have this shared. Like, then of course I would respect my sibling if they were like sharing something just with me. Mm. But I would still feel an obligation to tell you the general of what's happened. But oh, again, yeah. you don't need a code word for those kinds of meetings. Oh, yeah, those are the things sure. that are like absolutely unspeakable and you wish mm. you never ever have to speak about mm. it. So why on earth would you be planning Oh for yeah, it? I know if one of your sisters called you up and they were like, this is just for you. Okay, we need to touch wood because I don't want anything oh, yeah, yeah. that would, <laughs> would affect that to, to be but something that my I'm, sisters would call me that. I know that you would just say to me, something's happening and I'm helping but X. I can't tell you the details because it's that personal stuff yeah. I know yeah. yeah yeah wow Wow. Should we read on? We're we should. Halfway through. I'm yeah, so sorry. I know. This happened today. An emergency meeting mm. was called by my husband. Oh. So this is the husband of OP. The the parents. So the parents who, of, of this of the family that have the meeting. The family. Yeah. Capital T. Capital F. The family. family. All right. In short, he needs surgery. I won't go into more than that. Everyone left, and I got a call from my daughter-in-law, upset that she wasn't invited to the meeting. Oh. Well, I'd be surprised if OP went into more detail than that because. The siblings-in-law weren't invited, <laughs> so why would they tell the internet? Yeah. Okay, if touch wood, this won't need to happen, but if this were one of my parents calling to say the other needed a surgery, I would fully expect you to be involved. Like I would be in, there making the food. You would, I would be there doing the calls. Yeah, I would, and alongside. it's not just that, but you have an emotional attachment to my yeah. parents. You care about them. You would want to know what was happening. You'd want to know if there was anything you could do to help, and vice versa. Really interestingly, I've just thought of a bit of a, bit of a divide. I wonder oh. if yours are the same. I think if it's the parents, so all of the siblings, and the sibling in-laws up the hierarchy towards mm. the parents, fair. Because I can see a world in which the in-laws, both of us as in-laws, are very close with the parents. Yes. And the in-law parents. Does, the parent in-laws. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, like, yeah. I think the bond in terms of contingency planning and support, any in-law that I can think of, and there are a few, broken family, would benefit from both of us being there and would mm. want both of us being there. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. However... If it was an issue not up, but across, I could see the need for this divide. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. If it was one of my siblings' partners, I, I don't know why, I just feel like... You could see your sibling network, talking to you for advice, but not necessarily me, because yes. there's that extra layer of separation. Because not There only is, is, right? Yeah. I feel like you see your siblings' partners less than you do the ups. I do hear you, Something but there still doesn't need to be a code word. I agree. Yeah. Oh, and I'm sometimes sure. there may be situations where siblings do want their siblings in laws because they're also close. Yes. And it's so dependent on individuals. It, you're right. It's incredibly nuanced. But my point is with the, with the example given before and what's happened, I would expect as daughter-in-law to be involved in that meeting yeah, about the surgery. I couldn't imagine you not being involved. But I would totally appreciate it if your sibling had a chat about relationship stuff and I wasn't initially involved. Sure. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? I hear you. Opie says, I asked if she knew what these were and she told me that my son explained it and she reiterated that she should still be invited and I'm excluding her. Mm. She said that she's upset and expects an invite next time. Oh. I told her that her feelings aren't my problem and for f sakes, you don't need to be invited to everything. And she called me a jerk. My son told me that he will deal with it, but that I could have been nicer. So I'm at the drama for telling my daughter-in-law that her feelings aren't my problem. Oh, <laughs> I feel a little conflicted about this. So I feel like I have a badge. I have a badge. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Uh. 
everyone sucks. sucks here. Yeah, okay. because See, same brain. if this is how a family wants to work, I find it bizarre, but then other families might find the way that we work with our families bizarre. Very so true. it's just differences. So I think it's like a bit much, this whole contingency planning safe word, like no in-laws are ever invited to these like family meetings and stuff because in-laws are part of the family. So it does feel exclusionary to do it blanket rule. Some siblings, not just siblings-in-laws may be excluded on case by case situations. Yeah, and I don't think it's the case of trying to protect that person's feelings. You don't invite somebody to something that's like really important for you to discuss because you don't want them to feel left out. Mm. It's literally just because, well, who is it that you feel needs to know? Yeah. Logistically, who's going to support you the best? Emotionally, who is going to support you the best? Yeah. So yeah, I'm with you. Like I can't see a world in which this isn't done on a case by case basis. Yeah. So I can see why daughter-in-law is feeling left out. Yes. At the same time to be like, oh, I know what these meetings are and the premise of them and the setup has been explained to me but I'm being excluded and I expect an invite next time you can't ever demand an invite to anything <laughs> siblings me? could get excluded parents could get excluded from certain situations I do think it's bizarre that you're excluded on a blanket level but it's not something you can demand to say I expect an invitation next time you don't even know what the next time is going to be about um, that's what I'm saying like, it's just weird like you don't want there to be a next time yeah. so the idea yeah. that you're treating this as some kind of party to be like excuse me please make sure I have a place table yeah right it's just weird it is weird it's very odd and also just mm -hmm. not the way that you get closer to a family if no. the family is like hey <laughs> I don't think that you're close enough but then you're going <laughs> you I want to be involved <laughs> you clearly invite not me to you your emotions Emergencies. <laughs> the next time somebody gets cancer, you better tell me. Like, oh God, th that's the vibe. Yeah, that's no, coming it across. is like, It's so arrogant. It's, you just you don't. Because there's a way to express it. I feel like if this situation had happened to either of us, the way I would have gone about it is I'd have just said to you, "Oh, you know, I'm like totally there for X person who's having a difficult time. Let me know if there's anything I can do. If I should reach out to them." But I wouldn't be like, "Oh, I was excluded." I might feel a bit like, "Oh, but like I really care about this person." But exactly. if they will not come comfortable having me there that's their choice but like go to that person because because yeah. it's clear that go husband is now speaking husband. to you right go to your father-in-law and be like hey i'm slightly hurt that i wasn't here because i want you to know that i care about you but i understand if that's at the safe space that you felt please let me know how i can help in any way in this situation i personally wouldn't, wouldn't even, even bring up being her. hurt yeah i'd no. literally I'm just trying to think like that's what she's yeah. saying you know if that's what she's trying to say she's entitled to say that she feels she's excluded. entitled to feel hurt and excluded but, but it's because like, she wants to help right what i would say is i'd message the father-in-law who this would be to her and say hey like i know i wasn't at the chat earlier but i heard what's happening and i just want to let you know i'm here for you Please and i do care about you to yeah help yeah so I do care about you but op i'm not calling them the drama because of the family meeting set up because everybody works differently You're i think right. it's weird but whatever what i think garners the badge of everybody sucks is both of them have just been rude to each other yeah and like been a bit odd in a drama way like nobody's feelings are your problem but shouldn't you care about like just listen and have that conversation rather than I think saying everybody's feelings are your problem or your loved one's feelings are your problem if you are in part what's if, making yes. them feel that way yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any like listening of where the hurts come from. So I think they just shut down to each other in this. And to be fair, OP has also just had some really hard yes. news about I was her husband. Oh, or their husband. Sorry, I just ended OP and we don't know. But at the same time, we can still be kind. Yeah. This is not how we treat people who we love. Yeah. And to be like, oh, for fuck's sake, you don't need to be invited to everything. That is quite like, yeah. you're, you're asking for an argument, aren't you? Yeah. I think all this takes is a acknowledgement of, look, this is our family setup. I appreciate you wanted to be involved but there's certain things that are a bit more private to us mm -hmm. individually i'm sorry you don't like that this was a very stressful situation though i've just been told my husband is having surgery i didn't need you feeling excluded on my plate yes. i could very well see somebody getting all like i don't need this right because you don't there's a time and a place to and bring i do up agree this. if we're trying to put like onus one way more than the other i do think that daughter-in-law sucks more yes uh, and it's definitely more the drama because this is just not the time that you bring something like this up no you can feel it you can be like oh I'm hurt mm. but you wait until you have helped and the situation is hopefully improving in some way yeah. and then you say when it's a fizzle not yeah. a fire hey just want to let you know these meetings should there be one in the future I would love to be a part to help if yeah. possible if the person who is calling the meeting would feel comfortable with me being present and knowing what's going on I'd I'm love to be part of it because I love I'm here you yeah. that's the vibe I totally agree with you wrong place wrong attitude you know when it's not quite making sense it feels like a bit of a strong reaction from daughter-in-law 
world to be like i'm excluded history i wonder if there's exclusion in other areas not just the emergencies which i'm not gonna lie if you're doing these on the semi-reg i know you're saying it's it's like i know you're saying it's extremely rare but it's enough for you to have a word yeah where your families are coming together to do that Mm -hmm. i can definitely see a very close family unit which feels exclusive to the people that join it. Yeah. You see this in movies. Yeah. It's such a cliche. Yeah. Right? What we were watching, there's like a, a specific show where the in-laws all got together to like have a moan about the main family because they were all so neurotic. <gasps> Do you know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, I can see them. They're in a house. They were all it's outside a fancy house. and they said a word. Oh, it's they modern had... family. Is it? Yes. And they're like, and they I'm going to get word. orange juice. Yeah. And they were like, something is yes. up. It's just, it is a bit weird. Yeah, we all become family at the end of the day. I think think that's the point right mm. nobody wants to feel excluded really what you're saying here is you just want to share the love mm. so maybe phrase it that way next time daughter-in-law yeah not the drama mm. okay i'm not as comfortable around my sister's husband as i am around her this is my i point never about will be mm-hmm. yeah. it doesn't matter that i like him and accept him as part of the family i will never have the same relationship with my brother-in-law as i have with my siblings i would not feel comfortable explaining deeply personal and painful events in my life with him there you're letting your family have a safe space where they can feel completely comfortable that's not the question though the question was that how you interacted yeah. with it afterwards yes the op is not the drama for this element for allowing like siblings and parents a safe space with each other where they can talk freely without thinking that oh my sister's husband is coming to this and i don't feel comfortable saying this in front of him i do think that is totally fine to have that kind of safe space I do still think it should be case by case but that that's not what the post was about but it kind of is as well i know what you're saying it's about the aftermath but mm. it's also about the whole point is daughter and was feeling excluded because of the event. Fair. And I do think what you're saying is, by you saying, I think it's better on case by case, for yeah. you too, it does feel somewhat exclusionary. I do think it's a really interesting scenario though, and one of the perfect ones that I think really points out that there's sometimes not a right badge. Yeah. This feels like one of those situations where this concept of these family meetings really doesn't work with our family network, but yeah. could really suit others. And it doesn't mean that one is inherently wrong and one is inherently right. It's just yeah. nice to know that there are multiple points of views out there. We can all have our own low did experience right mm-hmm. going towards our judgment and i'd say our badges but tell me if i'm wrong for you but certainly my badge has come from not necessarily the scenario and the family setup but just how they've both spoken to each other in yeah. a certain situation sure i think no. it just was really fuel to fire agree but you also feel like it is a bit of an odd scenario for our network oh yeah i still that. feel it's odd but i'm Whereas i wouldn't call you is, drama for that yeah because some people might be like well that's exactly how we work and they might think that what we do is odd odd so, yeah and i can appreciate that different tricks for different folks and all that yeah you are the drama. Oh, mm-hmm. these people have married into your family. What a shitty thing to do. Even if there are emergencies and bad news, you're all supposed to be family. If my own parents pulled this on my husband, they'd get told to F off. Your feelings aren't my problem. I don't think that's a nice comment at the end, but this concept of if there are emergencies, we are all together because we are family. Yeah, that's more how we work. Right? That It's yeah. just like it would be unspoken. Yes. We are all invited yeah. to the same thing. Oh, I cannot get my head around <laughs> If somebody from my family called and said, need your help with this because this person is going through this thing, unless they then specified, it's private though, just you, uh, you would be coming with like, me. It would be recognised that that would be unusual. Yeah. Then, But then, at the same time, I definitely can think of some friends that we have where that would be really odd. Yeah, for sure. So interesting. Yeah. You are the drama. This is really Ooh, disturbing, oh, to be disturbing. honest. Oh, that's a, that's a really loaded word. That is. How close do you all live to each other? If I got an emergency code message, I'm guessing that you're all in witness protection (laughs) and dropped everything to get to this meeting and was forced to go alone and then found out it was for a divorce I would be livid talk about the boy who cried wolf (gasps) imagine if you had to get behind the wheel of a car by yourself terrified for bad news this is madness you don't consider your children's partners to be part of the family your poor daughter-in-law a divorce I think very hard but I actually I really see it I didn't even think about the concept that a code word meant that they didn't even know what the problem was until they showed up and then they're being forced to go without their partners and what if you are wow. far away what if you have kids what if you have to get a plane yeah or you've got work and you know someone else having to take times off or you know change their schedules I do get where this is coming from it's fair. used a lot more loaded language than I would have but I didn't think of this and now I have I do agree with elements of this elements and what I don't elements. agree is yeah. this whole boy who cried wolf I think yeah. that's a bit unfair because it, someone's world could be entirely crashing down divorce is actually a very big deal for people to go through and they would want their family support the majority of the time and for some people it may be 
incredibly time sensitive to mm-hmm. have that support. It, yeah. Depending on how it's happened, and why the volatility divorcing. of a relationship, mm-hmm. there could be reasons why you need to meet yeah. ASAP. But I do agree, if that's the situation, you go to one person and you're mm-hmm. like, hey, I need your help right now. And now let's get the family together. Yeah. The idea of being like, you must come right now. And I'm not going to tell you yeah. what it's about until you get here. You're right, yeah. that's really weird. I'm still uncomfortable about the concept of the family. <laughs> that I just, it doesn't sit right with me I personally. I don't necessarily agree with this comment, but I respect it. I agree with elements. Yeah, no, I wow. agree. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you are the drama. Your mm. daughter-in-law is a member of your family. If there's an emergency that warrants your children dropping everything and getting to your home as soon as possible, I think it makes sense that sometimes their spouses would be with them. Sometimes. Completely agree with that, yeah. Unless it's not that much of an emergency and they can drop their spouses off beforehand, at which point an emergency meeting probably isn't that much of an emergency <laughs> meeting. I agree with this yeah. way more. Yeah. And this is my point. Like, it's a nuanced situation. Mm-hmm. And if it is that important, don't do a code word. Just don't you can never. Tr- yeah, you can never treat emergencies in particular as a blanket rule for all of them it doesn't work it doesn't make sense i'm, ag- I'm in agreement with you and that's and what's the more not sitting that we're right. talking about this mm-hmm. the more i'm thinking the concept is really freaking weird, weird for it to not be case by case yeah. honestly you're over dramatic and in-laws are family you're fostering an environment where people are keeping secrets from their spouses and you sound like a terrible mother-in-law mm. i mean <laughs> <laughs> no no the reality being though i do think that decision should be up to each family network and if you as the head honcho of the family are like mm. no it's our our prerogative and right as a family that we always have this distance with your partner, the person that you're marrying. You never let them become family. It's odd. It's a bit sad in it my is, opinion. I totally, totally agree with I'm that. I'm feeling like there's more I don't know if my mind is being swayed slightly to think with that everybody sucks. I wouldn't change the badge because I think it's still a personal situation and if that had happened on a case by case where the father-in-law didn't want to explain details of this surgery which could be very intimate that makes sense that makes sense yeah and i do think she was being demanding but i think it's a lot more swayed in op's direction being the drama rather than the daughter-in-laws but i would still say there's a bit of suckiness going on with everybody a lot of it in the communication but i am seeing a slightly different side of how this family structure is very exclusive yes i'm seeing the family and this emergency meeting is being significantly more damaging than we initially thought yeah. coming into this. Imagine never feeling fully part of your partner's family. That would be really sad. It would that be really would be sad. That would be really, really sad. Yeah. This has been a deep one that didn't feel like it was going to be that deep, but it's been Interesting. deep. Interesting. Mm. Also, I really hope that whatever medical issue your husband is going through is something that is fixable and is fixed. Wishing you the best of luck. What do you think, Peaches? Let us know downstairs mm-hmm. in the comments section or over at 1-800-DRAMA-POD if you're listening to this on a podcast platform. Yeah. Oh, drama! All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Am I the drama for not helping a child stuck in a swing? (laughs) Sorry, what? Oh. Well, let's see. Okay, it's just a funny title. Sorry, (laughs) I'm not being mean. Maybe I am a bit. I'm a 25-year-old woman, and I took my two-year-old son to a playground at a local park today. Cute. We were the only ones there for about 20 minutes before this family of three kids, two girls and one boy, and an adult pull up. I don't think she was their parent, as the kids kept calling her by her first name. We'll just call her Katie for this story. There are some people who do call their parents by first names. Yeah, it's rare, but it does happen. Yeah, but it could also be a child mind or whatever, sure. The boy had to be between 10 to 12 and was a relatively heavy set kid. Oh, when you're okay. saying heavy set, I mean, it's fine. Honestly, I don't think it's bad. I think sometimes the people who use it, it depends on how it's being said. If you're like, they're a relatively heavy set kid. What you're saying mm. is the kid's a bit chubby. That's yeah. okay. But they're like heavy set kid. You know, they're like, oh, yeah. trying to do it because they're just kind of being fat phobic. That's yeah. what really yeah. bugs me. So like it's, my guard is up. But it's we'll hard see. to tell from that. Yeah. Mm. Without getting the tone. Yeah. They were all playing and running around, but repeatedly kept nearly trampling my two year old. Oh, no. So hang on, the boy is 10 to 12. 12, yeah. Who, how old are the other two girls? Do we not know yet? Didn't say. Okay. But it sounds like maybe older as well, but yeah. Poor two year old. I know. You were two once. (laughs) So were you. (laughs) They were clearly ignoring him, which is fine because not all kids have to play with each other, but they didn't even acknowledge his space and attempt to avoid running over him. That's really weird. Yeah. (laughs) Katie, where are you? (laughs) Katie decided she wanted a picture of all of them on the swings. The boy ran to the one of the age appropriate swings for him and Katie told him to get into the infant swing because quote, it would be funny. Okay, I don't think that Katie's a parent. No, I don't I think Katie's like a Katie's parent. I feel like either like a cousin, you know, someone who said, oh sure, I'll take the kids yeah. to the park, right? You do not get in those swings 
when you were a bit older. I Have you tried? I was taller, but like quite a slim kid. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger than 12, I tried getting in one of those swings and nearly got stuck. I agree. It's it's hard because they're on the chains as well. Yeah. But like when your feet are in, like your body kind of turns into jelly when you're getting into those and you're like, look, and you kind of fall in. Yeah. So the idea of having to like consciously get back out. Yeah. No, not for me. And for an adult to encourage a child to do that feels a bit iffy. I have stuck my butt in one. <laughs> I have like sat oh, in one. But without your legs. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I would never attempt getting my legs in. Yeah. So OP continues. Mm-hmm. They all help place him in the swing and laugh as they take their pictures. Also, he was helped into this swing. <laughs> That's going to make it even harder to get out. When he was ready to get out of the swing, Katie attempted to pull him out to no success. Surprise, he's stuck. Who could have possibly, possibly <laughs> predicted this outcome? Oh no. Yeah. Look, it happens. It happens. Yeah. But, but how do you fix that situation? Fire engines. <laughs> no, like seriously? No, seriously. When people get really stuck in things like that, though you have to get cut out. What a people, terrible waste people of resource. Have, people have been cut out of these infant swings before. No. Oh, this makes me so sad. Mm. No, this is like when old people run for the bus. Oh, I yeah, can't. Don't cry. Yeah, it's fine. Don't cry. Oh, no. Poor child. The embarrassment. The fact that this like cute little moment. Look, you were a family and you were just laughing and you were thinking you were making a cute little family moment and now you're stuck. No, I can't. And the fact that he was encouraged in there by an adult who was looking after him, who what he probably silly trusts. Person. Silly Katie. So they all slowly start to panic as they realise he is indeed stuck and they cannot get him out. I had about enough of this at this point with how rude these kids and Katie were, I had no desire to offer my help. I started packing up our things and took my son to the car. As we're leaving, I hear one of them ask, quote, can you help us? I turn to look at them and all of them are just staring at me with this entitled look. It didn't even look like concern. In response, I kept walking and didn't say a word. They continued to shout, asking for my help as I loaded my son in the car. I heard them calling 911 as I got in my car. Okay. It was a completely avoidable issue and a very stupid decision made by that adult in that situation. Yes. And none of them could give us a decency to respect my much younger child's space, so I feel like Katie has to take responsibility. So, am I the drama? Yes. Yes, I do think you are the drama. I'm sorry, I really think you're the drama. Hang on a second, we need to rewind. Okay, so they nearly trampled your two-year-old, that's what you're saying. Yeah. Obviously, that is not a nice thing to do. Katie should have been involved. I don't know why, it's my mind. Like, I'm assuming that Katie's younger. I, like, I have a vibe that Katie's like a younger cousin or a young okay. child. Like, like, someone who's just like there, but not really like Or in like, some way irresponsible. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. It's, it's not giving me proper mum vibes. Yeah. I can understand why you would be annoyed at the kids for not, not looking at your two year old right and having fun on the swings I would be annoyed at Katie and I would say that I'd be like excuse me your kids are putting my kid in danger yeah can you sort this out please it doesn't sound like OP communicated that That's at all to saying. either the children or Katie and because they're kids at the end of the day if the you amount, don't tell them exactly I was just going to say the amount of times I've been at a park and you do see the older kids scaring the little kids a little bit yeah. because they're just bigger they're just running around but and it's not necessarily excuse entitlement. me Bob can you not yeah. be aware little squishes are around you my love yeah. Get off the roundabout. You've had this for a long time I, now. There are other yeah, people here. Literally seen this happen. Activate mum mode. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I used to be part of like summer clubs and things mm-hmm. and there'd be a whole range of kids and we'd always be told as the older kids, careful, because people would get a bit overexcited. It's like if there's a younger kid on the same like thing that you're playing on, make sure that you don't push it as vigorously kind of vibe, like the roundabout. Yeah. So it's just something that kids need to be told and before to learn, they're aware. Right? Yeah. As they're going through life because how else are they going to learn unless you tell, tell them, them? But then to Katie's just leave. It. Yeah, but to just leave is very rude. The one thing that I will say is, oh no, I've, you've got I've a not face given on my it. Badge. Yeah, okay, hang on, I'll continue <laughs> mine first. I don't think there's very much that OP could do to mm-hmm. help. That's my only sort of qualm. The only thing that's stopping me from being like, no, you are totally the drama. But I still think you're the drama because you could have tried. I see what you're saying. That's it. Okay. <laughs> My badge? Yeah. Everyone sucks. I think oh, everyone sucks. Yeah, because okay. I think that there were kids there who were I don't think the kids, suck. kids at the end of the day. No, no, not the kids, but they were not being cared for by a responsible adult. Katie and OP both suck because it doesn't sound like OP made an attempt to make the children or Katie aware that her child was not having the most fun because of the older kids trampling. Yeah, and you're saying they're looking at you with this entitled look. They might not have been looking at you with an entitled look, but you just might be royally pissed off yeah. because of how they treated you or didn't treat your two-year-old, yeah. which I understand, but that is a you problem if you've not communicated it. And can I just say, if the oldest is 10, 12, or the boy is 10, 12, and the others are of a relatively similar age and aren't like little, little children, mm-hmm. most of the time other people's kids of that age can feel a little bit bratty, especially if you've yeah. already got in your head that you 
don't like them. Yeah. You could interpret just a kid like standing with their arms crossed or their hands in their pockets looking at you with a relatively neutral expression as entitled when actually they're just a kid. I agree. And you know what? You don't not help them. Unless you were having to be somewhere, which didn't sound like you were, mm. I really think that you should have stayed. I absolutely would have stayed. It was the nice, polite, kind thing to do. Two wrongs don't make a right. I've, you didn't yeah. communicate your wrong. And on top of that, actually, I'm saying this. I'm saying I don't think you could have helped. Maybe you could have done. Because look, now they're calling oh, 911. like a second adult holding the swing and the other one pulling him right? kind of vibe. Like, yeah. Because it, it sounds like Katie is the only adult. Yeah. So if this is a heavy set kid in a swing, then mm-hmm. extra manpower would yeah. absolutely help. Also, at the end of the day, the other person who was being a butt in this situation is Katie, not the not boy. Not the kid, exactly. Even if he's a bit bratty, even if he's a bit entitled, even if he's boisterous, that's because there's not a responsible adult there teaching him how to behave. Totally agree with and you. And by you just walking away, all that creates in that kid's mind is that somebody's not going to help him. Exactly. What, that's what I'm saying. What are you going to teach this child going forward? And what are you going to teach your your child that you walk mm. away when someone's in need of help. So I get many. it, they're two years old. But you even this 12-year-old who's in the swing and stuck, it's don't rely on the kindness of strangers, which I know I know you can't rely on the kindness of strangers because mm. not everyone's kind. But we should be able to nice because to in an ideal faith. world people would be lovely yeah. and would help. So I absolutely think that you are the drama totally for not doing this. I do think Katie is as well. Aww. She encouraged this 10-year-old boy to get in a swing that he was too big for, and then she didn't keep an eye on the kids and tell them how to behave properly in a public space. But this is where I think I'm now splitting hairs a little bit. The question is, am I the drama for not helping the child stuck? Oh. And I'm like, that's not Katie's fault that you walked away. Katie, at the end, was asking you for help, as were the other kids. You should have helped. I I do agree, though. Katie was not being a great mentor. Yeah, guardian But we don't know who Katie is. Mm. I took my little sisters to the swings and the playgrounds with you two and probably not the most responsible yeah yeah <laughs> i mean not that i was horrible no like, not was dangerous very... but just yeah maybe if they were acting out it wouldn't be picked up on in the same way a parent might have picked yeah. up on it you know th- there are many times where i would have taken them to the park and also sat on a bench and been on my phone yeah and not been fully aware of what was going on because i was too interested in what's going on on bebo or yeah. whatever it was at the time i think 90 percent of 10 to 12 year olds as well are a bit annoying yeah you know we'll it's just phrase. Like, so were we we, At the you end of the day, too, listener. this is a kid who's been encouraged to get into the situation by an adult that he probably trusted. He's now stuck and they're struggling to get him out and they have asked for your help. And I feel like I personally, even if the kids had been a bit annoying, I couldn't walk away. No, I, I could couldn't. Not. And do you know what else really pisses me off, right? This is t- thinking too far ahead. It is my duty as a person in a community to help out as I can. If I don't, right, you've now walked away, 911 are getting involved. Yeah. If you were able to help that 911 didn't have to get involved and they could be helping out somebody in genuine need Mm. I just think you're being so selfish here and so selfish in a way that you haven't even explained why you're not that's what pisses me off the most oh yeah not even talking to them exactly like literally just ignoring them I throughout the entire thing you could have at least communicated and said I'm not really in the best mood to help you because you nearly nearly hurt hurt my my son but like I appreciate you're stuck so what what can I do yeah and And I appreciate if you didn't want to touch if you didn't want to get involved if you didn't want to whatever but you could have offered to call you could have done something or you could have just spoken and like communicated just... if you're a 25 year old you totally could have helped in some way mm. yeah this is just this is just bad adulting decision in my opinion okay here my final point on this imagine if that were your son you have a son he's two years old imagine mm. if you had let your son out with siblings friends whatever and somebody encouraged him to get into a swing where he got and stuck and he got stuck and then nobody helped him would you appreciate that or would you want yeah. someone to walk away and then to have to rely on something like number yeah. one no 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 do unto you what you want done to others this is not the one do to others what you want done to you you know what i mean yeah <laughs> i as well i just reread the bit about what she's upset about i get it it's not nice to see if your kid's feeling a bit upset but it sounds like it could potentially be a little bit dramatic of like they were nearly trampling him they were ignoring him and they didn't even acknowledge his space and attempt to avoid running over him it I'm can like, be annoying but again if, that's kids babe talk to them about if, it and if a bigger kid ran into my toddler I would be like excuse to the me? parent figure I'd be like excuse me I'm really sorry your kid keeps like hurting mine could exactly. we maybe give them some space from each other exactly yeah totally no. 
I don't, I'm not happy with this one. That's why I say you are the drama. For not helping, you are the drama, but in this entire situation, everybody sucks except the children because I feel like they're quite... I disagree, but I respect innocent. it. Innocent. Okay, thank you. <laughs> not the drama. Mm, firefighters and EMTs can deal with this. What's an EMT? Uh, like a like a paramedic. An Earth emergency. mighty terrestrian. Right. Okay, okay moving on. I've been on. watching too much of too. In this time, I'm not touching someone else's kid. No way. He gets hurt. I'm getting sued. Oh, come off it. You're helping a child out of a swing. You're not in suits. Flipping neck. He says I touch him inappropriately. I get arrested. He spends an hour stuck in a swing without my help. I'm not drug off to court or jail. Life or death emergency or help. Uncomfortable inconvenience due to one's own stupidity. You're on your own. But it's not his it's own not stupidity. It's not the kid's stupidity. I, I just think so. This oh. feels like oh. really over dramatic. And also helping would not necessarily have to involve touching. This is the kind of like... person, right, who will not let you into their bunker. Yeah. In, yeah. That, is, that is the vibe that this is giving off. And I don't care for these kinds of attitudes. Help people. It's no, just the kind of thing I, to you, do. You can literally just help by speaking and reassuring and saying I, like, I don't feel comfortable getting like involved physically mm. but I can I can stay here with you for a bit if that really was your concern you could have filmed yourself you could have been like sure I will help you I will hold the swing but I will not touch you and yeah. I'm gonna put a camera up to make sure that nothing would go undisputed yeah. they're literally asking for your help so like oh, that really annoyed me <laughs> I don't know why that really really put me in a foul mood mm, not the drama oh it doesn't sound like the kid was in immediate danger or imminent death and what could you do to help You'd have called 911. Katie was able to do that herself. You or put... you'd have an extra help of hands yeah. to hold the swing so that the or kid could get out. just a slight reassurance for this individual person who's looking after three kids and one of them is now stuck. Yes, her fault, but the kids are still needing help. Well, yeah, you're right. Like I think it's pretty clear here, right, that Katie, or you feel that Katie is not the parent. You could have been like, is there anyone else nearby? You don't like drive hours and hours to get to a park. Your help mm. could have been Katie. Who do you need to call? Who else can you provide here? Yeah, can I could, help make that phone call for you? It could literally just be somebody saying, hey, it's okay, he's going to get out. Whether you can get him out or the firefighters come and get him, it's going to be fine. I can't stay because of this reason. My son needs to get to this or whatever. Like, you don't need... You could make an you excuse just and just go. Say anything. But it's the no, walking away and not saying. Yeah. Such a dick move. You put distance between your family and theirs since they were already being too rowdy. And then Opie's actually replied, Ooh. saying, this is exactly how I feel, lol. If it were a case of he got his foot stuck on accident on the jungle gym or something then of course but this was an active choice they all made and agreed on and every single one of them were aware of the outcome no they weren't but you're what? making it sound like that kid went oh yes let me get into this infant swing that i know that i will not be able to get out of he probably had no idea he'd get stuck and neither did the other kids are you stupid it pisses me off that people like this are parents and are imparting principles onto their children oh we've got angry shaba <sighs> i just i also don't agree with this whole thing of like only help people People if they're about to die. <laughs> And I'm like, that? okay, so if you see somebody's child fall in the street and they're upset and nobody's helping them and nobody else sees it, you're not going to go over and say, are you okay? So you're if telling me... If you see somebody, me... like, drop all their shopping, you're not going to help them. But then in the same breath, you're telling me that if he was to get his foot stuck in an accident on the jungle gym, then of course you'd help out. No, you wouldn't. You have just said that you didn't help out because they pissed you off. Yeah. You didn't even give a reason for not helping out. You just left. Yeah. Lies. Lies and Manelli in the <laughs> bad parent. Bad community. <laughs> Community member, bad, 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 bad. What annoys me more than her not actively helping is the fact that she literally just ignored. Yeah. I think that is the worst thing. Like, it's not even explaining why you're ignoring. It's not even saying, look, I don't really feel like helping you guys because it was a choice. Sorry, the cat is sniffing the light. <laughs> I don't know if you saw, but it's it, little, little ears. Little ears. Like, <laughs> You're so beautiful, sir. Sorry. It's the fact that you've decided in your head that you just don't want to interact with them whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't even have the decency to say, look, you I'm hurt my kid and I just out. don't want to help. And you chose to get in the situation. Rude, rude, rude. In the bin, you're the drama. Yeah. <laughs> Katie's an irresponsible guardian, but you're the drama in this situation. Everybody sucks here. Okay. Yes, those kids were being assholes. Yes, it was stupid to encourage the kid to jump into an infant swing and they got what was coming to them. But you still could have at least given it an earnest shot and and tried to help the kid. Two wrongs don't make a right. I agree with this one. I do agree too. I'm just really angry, so I'm not going to change my badge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baffo. Oh, I do like the saying, but not for this context. What's Baffo? Grind of find out. In terms of the swing. But it's no, no, that's not what this is. This is bad parenting move. Tr truly, to me, this is bad parenting energy. No. Mm. All right. Let's <laughs> Shake it off, Shabba. <laughs> oh, drama. Okay, the next one is actually been submitted by a listener. Oh. 
Oh, thank you so much. Say. Say. Thank you so much, Say, for submitting this. Say. What a beautiful name. Uh-huh. Am I the drama for ghosting my mother for being disrespectful at my uncle's funeral? Whoa. Ooh. This sounds spicy, dude. That does sound okay. intense. I'm a 34-year-old woman, and one of my three aunts had an ex-husband pass away in December. Okay. Sorry to hear that. She had remained good friends with him after their divorce, went to all the family events as co-parents, and my aunt took care of him as his health deteriorated. So after his passing, I wanted to do whatever I could to make things easier for her and my cousins. Mm -hmm. My family's Jewish, so I offered to greet guests at the door for the post-funeral event called the Shiva. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I would record names, take costs, accept gifts on behalf of the mourners, etc. Okay. Enter my mother, who missed the actual funeral, showed up an hour late to Shiva and completely ignored my aunts and cousins and the host, another aunt, for the event. Okay, not the best etiquette. Mm-hmm. After arriving, she stuck to my side like flies, making it impossible for me to take care of new arrivals. She spoke loudly about how awful her sisters were. Oh no. This is a funeral, ma'am? The immediate family of my uncle, the aunt hosting, and my third aunt, who was sitting literally three feet away on the couch. Ooh. Whenever I tried to speak with someone else, she would physically get in between me and the other person and crowd them out. What is with adults acting like children? What? Why is she behaving this way? She started talking loudly about old arguments and how her sister and ex-husband, my father, had brainwashed me, an adult in my 30s, to disrespect her. Babe, sounds like other people don't need to do that. She's doing a pretty good job at showing you the full colours herself. Uh I'm so sorry, Say, that you had to go through this. What the hell? No, yeah, this is just, wow. (gasps) After repeated attempts to remind her, we were at a house of mourning and this was not the time or place. And I appreciate how Say (laughs) has (laughs) capitalised that to air old grievances or engage in gaslighting, I gave up and I tried to leave in the hopes of removing a disruption. This is a very mature thing to do. It's very mature, but I hate the fact that you're having to leave an event where you wanted to pay your respects and be with your family to avoid. And it is is a really nice thing to do because you don't want it to be disrupted for them, but it's such a shame that you felt like you had to miss out. And it's such a shame that you are feeling as the child the need to respect the environment of those around you when your mum is not able to do the Mm -hmm. same. My mother interrupted an attempt to say goodbye to hug my aunt by physically pushing into our space and demanding hugs and kisses without so much as a thought for my aunt. Wow. I will say, I think maybe there was a thought and the thought was negative. I don't think this was done without thought. It sounds like this is all done pretty strategically and calculated, to be honest. The whole time, she didn't say so much as a word to her grieving family members or about the deceased and apparently left as soon as I did. Mm. She didn't sign the guest book, leave a card with condolences, make a call. In my opinion, it was appalling behaviour. I would say... Objectively, uh, this yeah. sounds pretty Because, like, it's even more so because this was a funeral and a place where you need to, like, be very respectful. And if you're not willing to be respectful, then don't go. But just any kind of event, if you put this behaviour in the context of any social situation, it's rude. Yeah. Especially the physical, like, demanding of space. Yeah. That feels really not okay odd. to me. Like, mm-hmm. particularly odd. One thing that I will say is I feel like, and I don't know why I'm saying this, maybe it's because it would possibly reassure me to hear. I think in these scenarios, what you have experienced and witnessed is not what everyone else has and it's nice to keep that in mind you tend to notice a lot more yes than as the other person people like will. really caught on to it and yeah. being in that close proximity so you've obviously heard everything because she's directing those comments to you but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that everybody in the funeral was as disrupted as you have been yeah it's obviously not nice that you have been this disrupted but i would take some reassurance in, in that does that make sense yeah should we be done yes after all of this i just felt done says say i told my family i'd blocked her number and i wouldn't be speaking to her again and mm-hmm. here comes to the drama. What? So the drama hasn't even (laughs) happened yet. (laughs) Apparently a lot of folks felt the same way about how she behaved at the funeral, but that breaking contact, especially without talking to her to say that I was going to do it, was Mm. going too far. They told my mother what I'd done and started passing her messages to me through text and email or lecturing me about the virtues of forgiveness and the parent-child bond. Oh, I mean, I think your mum is the one that's done a damage to the parent-child bond. And needs a lesson or two in forgiveness because she clearly can't let it go whatever's happened in the past. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, my mother lost custody of me as a child after making some very unwise parenting decisions and our relationship's been rocky over the years, but I still kept in touch. Mm-hmm. I honestly wouldn't have gone with the nuclear option if she hadn't shown me what I would consider to be a level of unforgivable narcissism and cruelty during an incredibly vulnerable moment of mm. people that I care deeply about. She might be family, but speaking to her after this feels like it would betray everybody else. This is so interesting wow. because I feel like you're viewing this based on a betrayal 
of other people, but the other people that you are trying to defend are the ones now causing drama for you. Is it the same people, though? Mm. As if I agreed with her or thought it didn't matter. I feel very strongly about this, but with the backlash, I worry that I've just made the situation worse and become the drama instead of stopping it. So am I the drama? No. (laughs) Oh, Sam, I'm so sorry you're in this position. I, yeah, I agree. You're Uh, absolutely not the drama. Absolutely not the drama. It feels clear that this is behavioural patterns that Say's mother has had for a long time, and this sounds like final straw. Yes. It's not just, you've not just gone nuclear option because of one incident. This sounds like a line of many, many incidences, and this was just the epitome of what you cannot put up with. And your line might be different to your family's line. Mm-hmm. They might be like, you know what, it's fine, you should still speak to your mother after this, but with due respect to your family, it's not their decision. No. It's yours. And if you feel like this is a line that you don't want to come back from, it's your prerogative. Yeah, for sure. You don't have to have contact with someone that you don't want to. Every relationship we have in life is a choice. Yeah, and your mum caused the initial drama with her behaviour. She's pushed you to that point of needing to go no contact, which is a totally fair step to need to take. But now you are not being the drama in this next step of what's happening. The rest of your family are. They should not be passing messages on to you from somebody that you have gone no contact with. That is That's really not, not very appropriate. No. If you don't want someone in your life, you don't have to have them. I'm going to say something that's probably going to be a little bit problematic. <gasps> I'm fronting that and I'm asking this to be considered within the safe space and the, the good intention that I mean it to come from. I do think sometimes when we see these posts and we, and we, we, we talk about any 1-800 drama thing that we discuss, they kind of fall into two buckets. Mm-hmm. There's one where the badge is most important, like the issue with the swing. You're the drama, that's it. There's not really anything that can help in terms of solutions. It's like a, it's a judgment based thing. Right. I feel like with this situation, the badge is kind of less relevant to me. It's more like how do we help say move forward? How do we fix it? It's more solution based than it is badge based. Does that sure. make sense? Yeah. And I feel like whilst I can very with conviction say you are not the drama, I wonder if the solution to this <sighs> God, it sucks sometimes to say this, but maybe doesn't correlate with the intentions that come behind the not the drama. Does that Mm. make sense? The reality is you don't have to speak to anyone. Mm -hmm. This is a very toxic environment that you try to take yourself out of. And it's incredibly sucky that your family are keeping you and kind of drawing you into that toxicity. Mm. There have been so many of these last words. I I cannot tell you how much I can resonate with the idea of how on earth have I become the drama when I'm the one trying to step away from it. And this often happens when people around you have different values that can honestly really seem like very toxic behavior in comparison to what you would want to do for yourself mm-hmm. having said all of that sometimes the best situation is not to walk away and i know how weird that sounds mm-hmm. in an ideal world i would want to walk away but i've been in op's position and especially seeing how much you're doing for your family and seeing you know like i'm not jewish i come from an islamic background and also from a very cultural background from what i understand family networks are incredibly religious also tend to be very cultural and quite like traditionally minded Mm -hmm. it can be really difficult to have to deal with that but you also want to keep them in your life despite the fact that you have a different and perhaps more progressive mindset Mm -hmm. you might not be involved in the toxicity the idea of cutting all of these people out or going against that will honestly just cause more drama for you in the long run because these are relationships and networks that you wish to maintain yeah do you see what i'm saying i do hear what you're saying i kind of feel i can't be confident obviously but i kind of feel like the family who are being difficult about say cutting her mum off are not the same family that were at the funeral. I would expect I feel them a to separation. Be the same. I'm, I'm ah, doing, I, I, okay. this, this feels exactly like something my family would do. That I'm like, hang on a second, I was doing this to help you out. Why yeah. are you now telling me that I'm in the wrong for reprimanding the person who's hurt you? And the reality is, I'm only talking from my experience here. Mm. Family stuff can get so messy. Although it's messy, my result is to be like, get in the bin then. I'm not going to deal with this messiness. You don't deserve me in this messiness. But a lot of families do just have that messiness. Yeah. They wouldn't cut the mum off. They just accept yeah. that the mum, not accept, they won't like it, they'll complain about it, but they won't cut, cut the mum off. off. I think it's just the bit about feeling like she'd be betraying everyone else by speaking to her mother again, made me feel like, well, if the same people that you feel like be you'd be betraying are the ones actively telling you to speak to her again where does the betrayal come in which is why i thought maybe they were separate groups of people it's a good point though not just protect other people but also protect myself Mm. right but also protect the other people and those were the exact same people telling me oh no you need to apologize oh no you need to see your role as somebody younger you need to respect these elders regardless of what they do okay do you see what i'm saying yeah i just i'm still not sure sure where it It could be either regardless my point is whilst i absolutely do not think that you are the 
drama and I, I don't want this to come across I, I can hear that it can sound problematic I'm not suggesting that you need to place yourself in this point of toxicity what I'm saying is I understand by being in this situation that sometimes you don't want to cut off your whole family in which case the easier thing to do is to be like I'm gonna try and dissociate myself as much as possible from it so I can still have these ties and not stress out and have like this super superficial relationship yeah. just to I hate this phrase quote unquote keep the peace I it hate it it can be I an option it. it doesn't have to be it, I, it doesn't have to be I no. wonder if in this situation just like personally I think what I would do this is coming from somebody who's not from a religious background or a background where like I don't think it has to be cult- religious no I'm just saying there's like not like this big culture around family yeah and it's very from a super very, traditional yeah the family brand is what matters more than the relationships yeah. within and I'm from a very very small family that doesn't have any of those kind of attitudes so obviously my advice might not count at all no it does but no no I mean it might not be helpful I think what I would do is it obviously explain to the family members telling me and say why this has happened but then also explain to my mother and it doesn't need to be verbal it could be in a letter to just say this is why I've taken this step because then at least to other people and for yourself you know you've provided closure on all and bases. I love you but and it I probably feel like won't that's help. so sweet yeah, but it also could make incredibly it worse. naive yeah. I don't think it'll make it worse I think they'll be like and it doesn't matter that is your mother she carried you for nine months she birthed you she brought you into this world the amount of things that she's done for you you don't cut that person off that is the response that I <sighs> have received do you know yeah. what I mean um, in those situations I'm not all saying it's about my mum or whatever but like yeah like typically that's what family attitudes would look like and sure. I agree that would be incredible and if you if you try that amazing and if it works amazing but if it doesn't I guess what I'm trying to say to say is don't feel like that hypocrisy is bad sometimes both things can be true you can hate the toxicity and you can hate the system but still want to be a part of that system and feel like you need to almost be at odds with yourself in order to maintain a family network do you mm-hmm. see what i'm saying yes yeah, i, I feel saying. like it's really nuanced and it's such a deep and yeah like difficult discussion but yeah that would be my viewpoint. I still don't think you're the drama. Though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not the drama. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry you're, you're dealing with this. Uh, and I hope you find whatever outcome feels best for you. It mm-hmm. might be that you feel a need to try and maintain this family network and not cut your mum off and there might be another case in the future where you feel this line is dropped and you honestly can't come back from it it might be that this is that time and any fallout from the family is their problem not your problem but it doesn't make it any easier for you to deal with whenever that happens along the line yeah wishing you the best of luck say yeah good luck I feel like this was a spicy one. This did, yeah. Some of it felt heavier than initially it seemed to be. Yeah, boy in a swing. Family code words. Like, who'd have thought? I'd almost forgotten the first (laughs) one by this point. Yeah, this was an interesting episode. If you enjoyed it, my loves, please do give us a little rating. You can rate every single episode on Mm -hmm. podcast platforms and it super helps us out. Yes, please do that (laughs) if you want to. You can also like and subscribe to this channel on YouTube if you are watching it. And don't forget to go leave a comment down below about what you think. And you can also submit your own scenarios if you want to for the podcast like over so. on our website shalbrandjamie.com on the podcast page and give us a follow over on Instagram at 1800 Pod. Alright, until next time, be kind. Much love. And have a great day. Bye. Bye.